Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Out Loud presented by Klipsch, a show about the power of making and creating and listening to just really, really, really good music. That's why we're here. My name is Mike Barato. I'm a senior product manager with Klipsch. Klipsch has actually been making speakers and headphones and soundbars that deliver that live music experience, that power, that detail, that emotion of live music for 75 years now. I am so excited today, guys. We have the wonderful Mariba, who's this super eclectic, multifaceted artist, this crazy life story, total Rolling Stone. Uh, but her music is this really unique blend of R&B and, and folk and, and hip hop. But she has this voice of this, you know, wise storyteller. So I'm really excited to have her here to support local businesses. Actually, in Mariba's home city of Atlanta, this episode of Out Loud is actually brought to you by Georgia Home Theater, your place in Atlanta for all of your home theater needs. We are also taking donations for the National Independent Venue Association. And guys, this is so important. When COVID hit, uh, these independent live music venues were some of the first to be affected. They were some of the first to close down. Unfortunately, they'll be some of the last to open back up. So uh, we all want to get back to seeing live shows. We want to get back to seeing live concerts. So please consider making a tax deductible donation at the donation link below. So before we get into our conversation, Maribel will be per performing a medley of her song Planet You, which is such a great song, and her upcoming single Rider. So out loud fans, please join me in welcoming the incredible Maribel. <laughs> Got you on my mind more than half the time, but I like it there, and they disappear. Such a worthy muse, otherworldly do, yeah. Lover, where did you come from? I wanna go to the planet from where you. You caught my, 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 my eye But now I don't wonder I know all my love's for you And if you want to fly, baby Let's circle around the sky Till we land upon planet you You're right I want to satisfy you A little cush I'm flowing I wanna push up on him. That's true. She, I don't usually do this. Oh, but you light my fire. I wanna be your rider. Be your rider. I wanna satisfy you. A little cushion floating. I wanna push up on him. I, that's true. She, I. Ladies 
Ladies and gentlemen, the incredible Mariba. Mariba, that was amazing. I'm like teary eyed over Thank here. Thank you so much. Thank you for playing. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So yes, I'm excited. Well, great. We're excited to have you. Let's let's jump into it. Uh, we've got some hard hitting questions okay. that we need to get through. Um, so sure. I, I want to talk about your childhood. You know, I mentioned you you were like a, a for sure Rolling Stone. You were born in Alabama, right? And you you spent some time in yes. like Pennsylvania and North Carolina and, and Ethiopia even, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. how did all of that sort of influence your your songwriting or your music taste? I mean, that's that's an experience that not a lot of kids get, like moving from not just city to city, but like distinct region to distinct region. So how does that affect your music and how does it affect your style? I think uh, it really just all blended, every region blended into my style. I definitely have a lot of Southern influence in my music uh, with my, I think my approach to storytelling and the folk and sort of, um, blues influence that exists in my music. I learned how to play guitar when I was living in North Carolina from a folk guitarist uh, who had many, many cool. stories. He was a native of North Carolina and just sort of that quaint country feeling, um, I think made its way into my songwriting style. And then living in the Northeast, like living in Philadelphia when hip hop was blossoming and there were so many exciting lyricists coming out of that region, New York and Philadelphia at the time. And um, I just absorbed all of that from my big brother and what he listened to and got really into rap music and just into telling my story in that way. And that's how that kind of made it into my, my style. And, and yeah, and then, of course, living in Ethiopia, going across the world and being exposed to... Yeah. Um, what life was like there and what music was like there and sort of the movement and the way dance played into uh, the music that people listened to there influenced hmm. me as well and made my music a little more upbeat with a little more bass and a little bit more funk to it. Um, <laughs> so I'm just, I'm cool. grateful for, for the journey. Although it wasn't always easy as a kid, it definitely yeah. um, had a great sure. effect. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, we are uh, fortunate for that journey for you as well, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of that that Southern like Southern blues and, and folk certainly comes across. Who are who are some of the like specific artists that influenced you or influence you today, like current or past yeah. artists? Who do you think about when you're sort of formulating songs? Well, I think I've, I've gotten to the point where um, they're they're just kind of a part of me and it just their influence has become natural <laughs> to me um, to where I don't think about cool. it too much as I'm making this song. But um, Lauren Hill was just a huge, it was a pivotal mm -hmm. moment for me when I first heard her music, her voice, yeah. her penmanship, um, like her, her overall style. Uh, Bob Dylan was a really big influence for me uh, mm -hmm. on the guitar singer songwriter tip. Definitely still think about him yeah. sometimes and just, yeah, he just has so much music and just so many different eras of his career. Yeah. So that's something that I definitely aspire to. And the way he told his story was one of one. Um, Nina Simone for mm. her essence, her voice, oh, yeah. her commitment to speaking about the times and to just keeping it real all the time. Um, Stevie Wonder, yeah. who has been... <laughs> so monumental to me as a musician and an artist but also as someone who yeah. i had the chance to meet and be mentored by so uh those are probably yeah. my top my top four man that's man that's quite yes. the list like <laughs> legends yeah. all yeah. of them man that's great so uh, you mentioned uh you mentioned bob dylan and uh sort of the storytelling uh, and sort of poetry in music really is what I think of with Bob Dylan. So yeah. what's, and I hear that in your music too. Do you have a, you know, w with everything going on nowadays, do you have a, a message that you want listeners to kind of take away from your music? Is it, it, you know, I think Dylan 
all of his songs, political or not, they had they had a message that went along with them. And, and do you think you have that in your music? I do think I think it's there. And I think I learned more about what that is from releasing my music and getting feedback from people who connected with it, which is always so powerful for me. But I, I realized that my music has a message of healing and healing not in the sense where like it always feels good. Sometimes what I'm talking about is painful, but sometimes when you're healing a wound, it's painful. It has different stages. Um, usually you have to clean it out first, and that can be really painful. And I think my music deals with those sorts of themes a lot, um, kind of the the truth that maybe I needed to hear, but I wasn't hearing from anyone else. So when I got to the point of writing a song about it, I was speaking to myself about things that I needed to change in my life in order to thrive more in it um but there's also very therapeutic and soothing sounds in my music that I think feel um like the later stages of healing when you start to notice that the scab is turning into a scar instead and it's getting further and further away from you and you're getting stronger again in that area so um I would say overall healing is like my main goal that I want to achieve through my music. Yeah. That's cool. And it's, it's very like self-aware to, to talk about, you know, it's not just about all the positives of healing. It's about, you know, the, the dark place that you come from when you're healing. And I, I, I was talking to somebody about this a couple of days ago, but your music, your instrumentation, especially in your production to me, sounds really like restorative mm -hmm. almost like it, it for me, it, if I hear, you know, some of your songs, it's, it kind of like wipes away this any feeling of like um, negativity or sort of uh, looking in the rearview mirror. It's it it kind of is inspirational to me to sort of look ahead. So it's funny you said mm. that, and I, that was kind of a softball question. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to talk to you about uh, you know that message in your music and see if that lined yeah. up. But. <laughs> That's cool. So I I want to talk about you. You've done a ton of collaborations and spillage village is this incredible super group uh that you're in with earth gang and jid and black and uh and some others how did you get connected with those guys uh i i heard you were all living together when you were making your last record yeah. spillagean and like what was that like because that was during the pandemic yeah it right? was the very beginning it was basically a year ago now okay. um well it was in march and it yeah. was that was crazy but i I met them, they're like brothers to me. I met them years ago when we were cool. just in the music scene together in Atlanta. Okay. And um, I met Earth Gang first and they introduced me to Jid and I met Black kind of separately. And I think it was just a kindred yeah. spirit thing. Like we just all felt, um, it felt like I knew them already before I met them. Like I was so comfortable around them and writing music was very, easy for us to do together because I think we all individually are pretty intentional in the way that we write music and you know the process that we that the process that we each have might be a little bit different but we definitely all approach music with a certain intention and a certain truthfulness that I think connects us so yeah we just honestly we used to party together we used to just be just <laughs> broke <laughs> trying to figure out what, how we were gonna break into music together <laughs> and um and it's yeah, been amazing cool. to see all of us kind of blossom and stay like a family all of these years and so spilligion was just a natural yeah. progression it was like all right we really need to make an album we had been saying it for years but we were like we're really gonna do this we're really gonna do this we finally got a studio house in atlanta and then the pandemic hit probably two days into us having yeah. that house so the oh wow. yeah okay. <laughs> so the whole theme of the so album like yeah exactly nice. so the whole theme of the album kind of shifted to all of the questions we were asking ourselves and each hmm. other at that time about you know is the world ending like is the world ever going to be the same are like are we going to be stuck in here how long are we going to be in this house um are we safe do we need to protect ourselves? You know, so many questions. And then obviously everything that yeah. started happening um, outside around May and June and the protests and everything, it just all kind of mixed into 
the process of making that album. Yeah, that was kind of my next yeah. question. You know, we we talked a little bit about, um, or you talked a little bit about intention. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you do you go into a writing process with an intention, or is the does the intention of a song kind of come out of you know mixing words together that that might be aesthetically pleasing? Um, is it is it really the message first and the intention, or is it sort of you look back on a song and you can say, oh, like I I see where my head was at there. Uh, wh which one is it first? I think it varies a little bit for me, um, <laughs> depending on how the music is making yeah. me feel. Just because sometimes it is like how you said it, like just stringing words together that sound right together to me until the intention reveals yeah. itself, <laughs> like kind of coaxing it out of whatever yeah. corner it's in. But yeah. I would say usually I approach writing with a concept first. So I, a, a message first, something that I'm really okay. trying to say. Cool. And, um, and then it's, you know, the process of filling in the right words to say it, but it does, it does vary. Yeah. I'd say both a little bit of both. And that, has that message changed or has the intention changed, uh, drastically over the last year with everything going on? Um, to be to be real like i've i feel like i've been touching on a lot of the things i mean obviously not a pandemic i've never experienced that but i mean all uh, the unrest right. that that we've experienced i spoke about a lot throughout my years of writing music yeah. to the point where my friends would kind of like tease me and and like say i'm an old lady or like an old soul or just like why do you write about the things that you write it's kind of yeah. it's kind of deep for like a 20 year old you know but it feels um i guess it feels even more healing for me personally to write right now because the world collectively is going through the emotion it's not just me looking out into the world like why are things the way yeah. that they are and questioning it it's it's like the collective yeah. asking those questions and um yeah cool. we we need it yeah we need to be asking those yeah. questions that's great so i i want to get back a little bit to the collaboration mm -hmm. part uh, you know i you've also worked with like ninth wonder and rap city and vince staples uh the the uh new burhana track yeah. uh golden part two that you did with him that's i mean that video is super Thank sick you. um so like who's next if you could pick one one person in the world to collaborate with who would it be that's so difficult um <laughs> <laughs> wow that's that's there's there's a few um there's a there's a few i would say i'd love i don't think we make like exactly the same kind of music but i would love to hear what me and frank ocean would make he's like the most enigmatic artists oh, that cool. exist so I don't, I don't know yeah um i yeah. i don't know if she sings anymore but i've always wanted to make a song with stevie nicks because i just feel like we our styles will go together but i don't know if i'm just um yeah. i don't know how far-fetched that is <laughs> um um i one of my favorite new artists and his his writing is just insane. I've told him this, but his name is Smino. He's really amazing, and I would love to work with him. Mm. And um, yeah, I okay. My last one I'm gonna say is Thundercat because he's just so incredibly talented and such a kind person. So yeah, yeah. nice man. Yeah, well. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all of those collabs with you. So um, yes. I'll keep an eye out for it. So, cool. so here on Out Loud, Maribo, we've been doing what we call rapid fire questions. Just quick okay. questions, quick answers. Uh, you know, don't think about it. Just the first thing that comes to mind. So, okay. number one, most embarrassing moment on stage. Ooh. Um... Also, a couple came to mind. This would be rapid fire. Okay. <laughs> My track was looping and I didn't know. So the song was like an infinite loop and I just kept singing. Oh, and the song nice. went on for about seven minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In the 90s, we would call that a jam band. So how did you, how did you like come out of that? Um, I don't even remember because I kind of just like 
just blacked out everything that was happening <laughs> once I realized it was happening. And I was like, I honestly have no recollection, yeah. but it, I'm not in yeah. it anymore. So I, at some point I'm, I turned it off somehow. or I made some yeah. sort of joke. I don't know. You, you escaped the <laughs> matrix. Nice job. Yeah. Uh, okay. So best, best sounding or favorite venue you've ever played. Mm. <sighs> uh, there's one in DC. I'm going to just say this venue. I, there's been a, there's been a few, but it's, it unfortunately closed okay. down during the pan- pandemic. But U Street Music Hall oh, in no. DC was was really great. It oh, was cool! Really great, yeah. Man, okay. Well, yeah. Hopefully they'll be be back up and running. It's hopefully yes. not a permanent thing, but we'll see. Yes. Man, okay. La- last one. Last one. Give okay. us your favorite ASMR sound effect. I really like the sound of I've never listened to ASMR, but I really like hearing people like but you can't tell what they're saying at all. Yeah. Like people whispering in the other room. Yeah. The like the Yeah. The, the unintelligible whisper. Okay, that was a good one. Man. Yes. That was I love that it. was really great. All right. On on out loud <laughs> ASMR rankings, that was very high. Nice nicely done. <laughs> so Mariba, thank you so much for being here. We're so grateful to have you on Out Loud. Thanks for the performance. Thanks for the incredible conversation. Good luck with everything. We're excited to see what's next from you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Out Loud fans, thank you all for tuning in. Be sure to follow us at Klipsch Audio on all of your social media, uh, wherever you get your social media, wherever you get your music, follow us. Klipsch speakers and headphones are available at Georgia Home Theater. And also, please consider making a tax-deductible donation to the National Independent Venue Association to help save our stages. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time here on Out Loud. 